bearing in mind the moon is gradually retreating from the Earth when will the last ever total solar eclipse be? <laughs> it's a brilliant question. You know, so the first thing to say is it is, the moon is drifting away from the Earth um, because of uh, the, the interaction between the tides and the spin of the Earth and the orbit of the moon and it's quite a complicated system of things spinning around their axis and spinning around themselves. And so, so ultimately, the, the, the way that system works is that friction um, drives the moon slightly further away. It's, it's friction. It's the Earth's spin that's slowing down beneath the tides. And there are very complicated interactions. Um, but ultimately, the upshot is about four centimeters a year. The moon is drifting away from the Earth. I haven't done the calculation of... Uh, and it's not entirely trivial because as the moon, the moon doesn't, doesn't just drift four centimeters away and carry on doing that. And so you can't just do a sum and go, how long will it be until it's got far enough away that it'll be really small because that rate of drift changes as the moon moves further away. So it's not a completely trivial calculation. And I don't know the answer. Um, someone will have done it. Uh, it's, it's relatively easy to do, but you can't really do it on the back of an envelope. So, so the answer is, I don't know, but I suppose you could get a back of the envelope by saying, well, all right, four centimeters a year. Um, and you know the angular size of the moon on the sky and it's to a quarter of a million miles away at the moment. So um, how, how far does it have to go to shrink by 10%, let's say, then that, that would be a question for the, for the viewer. <laughs> but you could probably work that out. But I caution you that it won't be as accurate as you might want because because as the moon moves further away the rate of drift changes because the the tides change and the way that the system responds changes some of the locations were stunning on the latest universe series how long did filming take it was a very difficult series to film because we filmed it during lockdown um so actually more than ever we filmed in the uk and uh you know uh, it was actually, a, a, that was one of the benefits. Um, you know, it's almost like a silver lining um, because it it changed the series. So, for example, the, the film about galaxies called Islands of Light, we filmed almost entirely on, on Sky in Northern Scotland. And um, that focused our idea on the idea that galaxies are islands. Um, they, over short time scales, they're isolated from the rest of the universe. Over long time scales, they're not. So just like islands, right? So geology moves, <laughs> things move around on the surface of the earth ultimately, and the, the oceans weather the island and so on. But on small time scales, they're islands, they're isolated. And it's the same with galaxies. So galaxies inter interact with each other on long time scales, but on short time scales, they kind of evolve on their own. And that led to a different feel for the program. And that, that concept became central to the program which it wouldn't have done, I think, if we'd not filmed entirely on an island. I, we may not have even had the idea to do that otherwise. So it's uh, sometimes difficulties can become uh, inspiration. And that's what happened in the series. The, the black, I, I have to joke because, you know, I'm from uh, Oldham, which is uh, Lancashire. When I was born, it was Lancashire. And uh, we filmed the black hole film almost entirely in Yorkshire. And I think that's appropriate. <laughs> I'm joking. Yorkshire actually, Yorkshire actually delivered. It was magnificent. The, it looks like, you know, we, we, we might have, we, we did film in Iceland actually, but often you go to Northern Norway or Iceland to get these beautiful landscapes. And uh, it snowed when we were in Yorkshire. And when it snows in those landscapes, it's um, as beautiful as anywhere else in the world. Um, you know, anywhere you go, the snowy, snowy mountains and fjords and lakes. And, and um, it, the Yorkshire really delivered for us. And it, it, you're right, it was absolutely beautiful. And uh, again, you know, the, probably partly because of weather, you wouldn't normally choose to film in, in North Yorkshire in, in January, February, you just wouldn't do it. But, um, but, but we did it and the weather delivered and it was absolutely magnificent.
So we saw Yorkshire at its best. Professor Brian Cox, Horizons, a 21st century space odyssey, live on stage, using state-of-the-art LED screen technology. Theatres and arenas will be filled with images of faraway galaxies, alien worlds, supermassive black holes, and a time before the Big Bang. <laughs>